What's up guys, my name is Andy Sawares and today this is going to be the Arch Linux customization guide. Now, I've had a lot of comments in the previous video, what is Konky, and I can't thank you enough for that kind of feedback, because now this video is going to exist because of the feedback and because of people wanting to know what how I make my desktop look the way it does. Um, so, the, another question I got was, what is the hardware I use? I have an Intel Core i7-3770, should have got the K model, didn't do it when I first built my computer, this is the first computer I ever built, so... I have 8 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM, a GTX 760 2 gigabyte variant, and I have a gigabyte Z77 DS3H motherboard. These parts all come together to be what my computer is right now. And um, also, when I first built this computer, this computer was going to be a Hackintosh. It is a Hackintosh still. I do have Mac OS X installed on another partition, and I don't think many people know that because it, the video is kind of dated now, where I did what is a Hackintosh. This is still a Hackintosh, though I haven't been on Mac OS X in a very, very long time because I kind of moved on from that and um, moved on more to Linux, fully on Linux now. So... Another question I've gotten is, what software do I use? What is the software I record with? I use open broadcasting software to record with. I use Krita to make the thumbnails, and I use Kenden Live. All these three programs are literally the best programs you can use to record, render, and make thumbnails. So this is uh, open broadcasting software. It is a port from uh, from Windows. It is um, not. I'm not using Wine or anything. It's an actual Windows. It's uh, OBS did make a Linux version. It's not fully released now yet. You have to get this through your root. And uh, once you get it, and it's, it works really good. It's in beta. It's not really officially released yet, but it is a really good software. Um, Krita is, uh, I made a separate video on Krita, and I'll have it annotated on the screen. Uh, Krita is a fantastic photo um, creation tool. So you can make photos, you can draw, if you have a Wacom tablet, you can make uh, tools with it. And using this tool, I use it to make my thumbnails. So this is where the last thumbnail was made, and I can pull that up. And uh, this is where a video like this, all production is on Linux, which was uploaded without audio recently, which will be upload, re uploaded soon enough. And that will go a little bit more in depth into these programs I'm using. I'm just going to go over them a little bit now. And uh, Kenden Live is the second, uh, third program I use, which is my rendering. This is what I render video in, I uh, edit, and all that stuff. Next would be the look and feel of my desktop. How do I make my Arch Linux installation look and feel the way it does? Well, here, oh, I didn't mean to open settings, but um, we'll go up to utilities and we'll go to the tweak tool. The tweak tool is something you download separately when you get GNOME 3.16. And I recommend if you want a really good customized system, use either GNOME 3.16 or uh, Cinnamon or maybe even OpenBox. Those will work pretty nicely. Um, so here is my theme right now. I have a global dark theme is off. If I turned it on, it would look somewhat similar to what I'm using right now. Um, GTK, I'm using the Numix theme. Icons, I'm using the Numix Circle Light. And the cursor, I'm using the Mate cursor because I do have Mate installed as I played around with that before. So to get these extensions, you're going to head over to uh, extensions.gnome.org and you'll be able to pick a bunch of different extensions that are fantastic. The Make My Doc Peer is uh, called Dash to Doc. The Applications menu is called Applications menu. And there's a lot of different others. I even have a translator right here. This will translate live languages and it will go to from Google Translate and there's another one too. There's a Yendex Translate and you can translate live. So these tools are fantastic. Let's see if I can actually get out of that. Uh, yeah. Um, and you can really add a lot of things that are really helpful. Um, we'll even add one right now. So play status indicator, we'll go in here, we'll hit active, it'll ask me to install, I'll install it, and it will appear right here. So places, now I have places on my desktop. So things like that, very helpful and very functional. Now I have drop down terminals where I hit tilde, the tilde key and a drop down terminal will pop up and we'll get out of uh, each top right here. And then you can have a, um, a drop down terminal, which is a lot more helpful than just having to open a terminal every time you want one. Or you can even use multiple terminals when you have this terminal open and doing something and you can use Terminator for something else. Next would be what, what kind of application do I use to make uh, life a lot easier. I use Terminator is a great terminal emulator. It's fantastic. It works the best out of all the terminals I've ever used. So highly recommend Terminator doing that. I use um, for just plain old text editing. I use uh, Visual Studio Code and Visual Studio Code ironically is the best text editor I've ever used and it's made by Microsoft. So props to Microsoft for making something very, very good. It has auto saving abilities where I, I mentioned that in the Conky videos, enable auto save, which will auto save you into the ability of doing that. Next question I've gotten was what icon set do I use? And that's a uh, Numix Circle Lite. And to download a uh, Numix and Numix Circle Lite, I usually go through Yarut and uh, we'll even go through that just here a little bit. Clear. So Yarut, Numix. 
Um, for other systems, I'm not really sure what they use, but there's different ones. And if you're using Arch Linux, I, I, I say recommend, like, get Numix themes here. Numix themes will get you the Numix GTK theme, all that. Then you can play around with these. I would get uh, the Numix Circle icon theme. Play around which ones that work the best. This is Numix for, uh, Frost themes, which is um, what um, Antergos uses. So you can do that. You can have the square icon set. So there's a lot of different things you can go with. So what I use to make the desktop active. So a lot of times people will ask me the question, like, how am I using, like, uh, one of the questions was, why, how am I doing this? And um, that is because I have this running. It's called XF Desktop. And XF Desktop will turn your desktop on. Like in many other, distribu uh, many other desktop themes, which is like GNOME 3.16 or even um, uh, OpenBox, you can't put desktop applications. You can't put things on your desktop. And that is because um, the desktop is usually deactivated by default. These these distri these um display managers they don't have them. So what I did was enable XF Desktop. And XF Desktop you can get from the uh, uh, extra repository on Arch Linux. I'm not sure for other distributions though. If you do question that, I will try to find a tutorial or uh, guide for you for that. Um, but this enables your desktop and it lets you do anything you need to do. Have this and uh, make folders, make a new window things like that. It's very helpful and it makes your Arch Linux installation much more usable. So yeah, that's going to be it for my Arch Linux customization video. What do you think about my Arch Linux desktop and what would you do to make it even better? Leave it in the comments below and I'll message you back. And as always, my name is Aiden Suarez and I will see you guys in the next video.